Hey everybody, welcome to the R&R series. The R&R series is dedicated to dry curing and fermenting meats and the troubles and problems that you're going to face. We take a raw and rustic approach as we deal with some of the maintenance, the troubleshooting, and the solutions on some of these common problems. And in today's episode, we're going to be talking about pH meters. Do you even really need one? pH meters are not cheap. They can range from hundred bucks to $500. And one of the questions that we get asked a lot is why can't we just use litmus paper to test the pH of our meat? So in today's video, we're gonna actually put litmus paper up against an actual pH meter, and we're gonna see what the differences are, whether it's even worth the uh, $250, $300 investment if you're a hobbyist. Hopefully by the end of this video, you'll have the information necessary to make the decision that's right for you. Let's go take some pH samples. When it comes to pH meters, they come in all shapes and sizes. Today, for our tests, we're going to be using the Apera Instruments PH60S-Z. This is called the pocket tester because everything you need to test your pH fits right inside your pocket, just like that. Very easy to use. Other pH meters might come with a base or an external probe, or maybe even something to test the temperature, things like that. But this unit by Apera Instruments is perfect because everything is self-contained and that's what we're going to be using for the test. When it comes to litmus paper, this can be bought by the range that it'll test. You can buy litmus paper that tests in whole numbers from 1 to 14, 1 being the most acid, 14 being the most alkaline. Or you can get pH paper that has a more narrow spectrum, like in this case, which will test between 3.9 and 5.7. Now it just really comes down to what you're going to be testing. When it comes to testing the pH of your meat after fermentation, the range is definitely within these parameters, so this litmus paper should work fine. To get started, we need to set up a solution so that we can test with our litmus paper, and that involves using uh, distilled water, and we need to calibrate our pH meter so that we get the most accurate results. In one of our tests, we're going to be creating a slurry with the meat, and we need to use distilled water rather than tap water because distilled water contains no minerals, additives, things like that. But we also want to make sure that the pH of our distilled water is a 7, otherwise if it's too acid or alkaline, it could affect our results. So if you're going to use distilled water in your test, you do want to make sure that you have at least some way to test the pH of it. Okay, here's the pH of our distilled water. It looks like it's 7.07. .07. This is pretty important because if it's too acid, it could make your pH reading lower than it should, or if it's too alkaline, it could make your pH reading higher than it should. So you do wanna make sure that your pH of your distilled water is neutral. And one more time, 7.08, looks like we're good. All right, let's get the litmus paper ready. And the very first thing you wanna do when you get your litmus paper is check the expiration date. Today is January the 2nd, 2021, and according to this litmus paper, it expired on October the 30th, 2020. So we're going to go ahead and toss that litmus paper and grab a new one so that we can conduct a test with the least amount of variables. All right, so let me grab a new one. This just got delivered just last week, so we got a brand new fresh little packet, and the expiration on this new litmus paper is February the 1st. 2022. So there should be no problems with this litmus paper. The first thing we want to notice is how this particular litmus paper reads. It starts from 3.9 and goes to 5.7 in increments of three tenths of a point, starting from yellow green to blue. Now that could be problematic if you want super accurate results, but it should get us kind of in the ballpark, which is kind of what I'm hoping is going to happen. So the first thing we want to do is run somewhat of a baseline experiment. I know that our calibration solutions read true. And so what we're going to do is we're going to test our uh, meter and our litmus paper in the 4.0 calibration solution. So that'll be just kind of a, a baseline test. Let us know where we're at. My meter's reading it at 
one. There we go, 4.00. Everything's looking good with our solution and our meter. Let's go ahead and stick some litmus paper in there and it should read 4.0 as well. But the measurement of the pH is dependent on the temperature. Now, the samples that we're testing happen to be around 76, 77 degrees Fahrenheit. And that's what litmus paper is standardized for. But if your samples are hotter or colder, you have to make compensations for that because litmus paper doesn't take into account temperature fluctuations. So our results are reading definitely towards the left of the spectrum. I'm thinking it's somewhere between 3.9 and 4.0. looks like we're good to go and move on to the next step. We have a fresh sample of salami meat that's been fermenting for 20 hours using a salami culture and it's time to test the pH. Now, the most commonly accepted way is to take one part salami meat and two parts distilled water, make a slurry, and then take your test. So we're gonna definitely do that, but we're also gonna do another way, which is just simply sticking the litmus paper inside the meat to see what happens. pH is so incredibly important when you're dealing with salami because if it's too high, you could be making an unsafe product which could get people sick. All right, so let's get the first test going. We're just gonna dip it in that slurry water and uh, go ahead and just set it right there, right in front of the color spectrum. Let's see what we got. And this next little test, we're just gonna press it right in the center and fold the meat around it. Now I wanna let it sit in there for a couple of seconds so that it can soak up some of that juice and hopefully we'll get a nice pH reading from this as well. And here's what I want you to do because I know as you're watching this video you're uh, trying to figure out what that number is. Before we actually test it with our accurate Apera pH meter, I want you to go to the comment section and type in what number you think these strips are reading. All right, so I'm not going to give you my thoughts on it until the end of this video, but based off of what you see here, now we have the top one which is the slurry, that's that top one right there, and we have the bottom one which is the uh, just pressing it up against the meat. Uh, tell me whether or not you see a difference between those two colors and tell me what color you actually think it is. If you had to guess, if this was your salami, what is the pH that this litmus paper is reading? Now remember the safe zone for salami is anything under 5.3, really 5.2 is where I like to be. Anything below 5.2 is considered the safe zone. If you haven't reached it yet, you have to keep fermenting. So tell me what would you do if this was your readings? All right, I hope you have your answers in the comment section below because now I'm gonna show you what the pH of the slurry actually is with the Apera pH60S-Z, very accurate pH meter. We're gonna come in at about 5.15. So the pH of the slurry, 5.15. Now it's time to test the actual sample. And this is gonna be a more accurate reading because our sample is not diluted with distilled water. And with this particular probe, it's designed to be accurate in both solid and liquids. And it looks like our pH is coming in at 5.04, 5.04. So let's test the other mass just to double check, see what this pH is. And it's also reading 5.04. So there we have it, 5.04, that's the actual pH of the meat that's been fermenting for 20 hours what did you guess? When I first looked at the litmus paper results, I immediately went to the right of the spectrum. To me, it looks rather blue. And I thought 5.7, maybe even 5.8. And quite honestly, if this would have been my test and my salami, I would have freaked out because 5.7, 5.8 is the pH of raw meat pre-fermentation. I would have probably thought that maybe I forgot to add dextrose or something like that. So if this would have been my results, I would have let it ferment for another 12 hours and if it didn't change, I would have probably tossed it. But as you could see from the Apera pH meter, we had already hit our target of 5.04. And this is the stage where you pull it from fermentation and you begin the drying process. Matter of fact, if we would have continued to ferment the salami, the pH would have slowly kept dropping, giving us a very acidic product, which still would have been safe to eat, but it would have been incredibly sour, very, very tangy, and it would have rendered some of the bacteria in our culture useless. 
And that wraps up today's r and episode. And I think there's four things that we could take away when it comes to using litmus paper to test the pH of a solid sample like fermented meat. Number one, litmus paper is designed to test the pH of a liquid sample. So you're already gonna be faced with challenges if you're trying to test a solid sample. Number two, color sometimes is subjective and you may see a shade of blue or green differently than I might. And so our results are gonna vary. Number three, pH litmus paper does not take into consideration the variable changes in temperature and how to adjust for that. And number four, quite possibly the biggest issue that I have with litmus paper is accuracy. Uh, it's not very accurate when testing a solid sample. And you wanna have accuracy when testing fermented meat. Look, you're probably gonna make salami, feed it to your family, feed it to your friends, and you wanna know definitively that you're making a safe product. And that's the difference between using a pH meter and litmus paper. With a pH meter, you can hit that safe zone and even target those nuances of flavors depending on the culture or the bacteria that you're using to ferment your meat. With litmus paper, you just can't do that. At the end of the day, we're dealing with raw meat, pork, beef, lamb, chicken, depending on, on what you're producing, and safety should be absolute top concern. And I get it. I realize that people have been making salami long before pH meters were invented. And if you come from a long line of salami makers, there's a decent chance that you probably don't need a pH meter. But for the rest of us, home producers of salami, hobbyists, having uh, an accurate way to test a pH is, in my opinion, absolutely critical. So is a pH meter necessary when making salami? Well, I'll leave that answer up to you. And hopefully through this video, I've given you enough information to make an educated decision. If you're looking for a pH meter and you want one that's easy to calibrate, fast, reliable, easy to use, check out the description box below. I'm gonna put a link to the one we use, highly recommend it. I can't even imagine making salami without it. If you're experiencing any problems in your salami or salumi making journey, be sure to leave your problem in the comment section below and I'll see if I can help you overcome that hurdle. Thanks for watching this video. If you're new to the channel, don't forget to subscribe, like, comment, and share. A lot of great tips, a lot of great videos on the horizon. We'll see you in the next one.